everybody, welcome to Hank's True Barbecue. Today we're actually inside or indoors, which is nice because I have a brand new grill here. It's a kettle grill, uh, so it hasn't been used yet. So the reason for today's video is to talk to you about three modifications you can make to turn this little kettle into a serious smoker. Now for various reasons you may already have a grill, you just need a second one at the summer house or something, or you just don't have the money right now to spend on a, an expensive grill. So I thought, you know, it's always relevant to see what can you do with a really cheap grill to turn it into a serious smoker. Because you can, it's not so much about the tools, but how you use them. So I'm going to show you three little mods that really turn some tricks. Uh, so this is going to be good. Let's get started with the first one, which is sealing it up. Because typically, uh, specifically with cheaper, cheaper kettles like this one, which is a no-name brand, it looks like Weber, but it's a cheap copy. Uh, they're just a bit wobbly, and this is a trick that I apply to Weber kettles also. Uh, and that is to seal the rim here, because you want to make sure that air enters through the bottom vent and out through the top vent, but nowhere in between. That way it's a lot easier to adjust temps using the top and bottom vent. So let's get started. I bought a uh, replacement gasket for Kamado Joe sometimes. Sometimes now I got the one from Monolith Barbecue. The Big Green Egg has one, it doesn't matter much which one you pick, just pick one which is self-adhesive because that really helps with mounting. This is what it looks like, this one's black, comes in different colors, doesn't matter much. Here's the lid, all brand new, so if you don't have a nice clean lid like this one, which is very seldom the case, you're simply going to have to clean the inside, so we're going to mount it right here on this little edge so it rests firmly on the bottom half. Now, as you can see, this gasket is a bit too wide, but that's actually a good thing because I cut these in half lengthwise with a pair of scissors, and that means basically I get two for one on these. So even better. But let's get started cutting this one lengthwise and start mounting it so you can see how it fits on the grill. So we're just gonna have to eyeball this one. And the length you need, so the diameter is 22 inches times 3.14, that's roughly three times the diameter. That's the length of gasket you need. All right, now that we've cut it, we're simply gonna start mounting it here. Get it close to the edge, just one inch at a time. Just keep moving along, and it'll get there. I guess I'm lucky in this case because it's a brand new grill, so I don't have to clean the inside edge first, but... All right, so the gasket's mounted, looking good. Let's just give it a try. Now notice the sound when you put the lid back on. Really nice and smooth. Good fit, seals up real nice. So, step number one accomplished. Now the second thing I do, which really creates a true two-zone setup, is to simply get a, a slow and sear and put it into the kettle. I know you can do without one, but it makes it so much easier to fill this side with charcoal or briquettes. You have the water reservoir, which separates cool in the hot zone and then you place the grates back on. And like I said, this is a dead cheap knockoff of a Weber, but it still fits the slow here nicely, so I can highly recommend it. The one I have here is the old one. I think they released a 2.0 version now where you can detach the water reservoir. But either way, it's, it's really good. I've used it for years now and it's, it's just awesome when using the kettle. And now the third trick, as always, get a good thermometer, place it on the grates where the food is. No matter how good the lid thermometer is, it's always in the wrong place. So you need to measure temps where the food is on the grates. Get any thermometer really, they, they don't have to be that expensive, but as long as you place the probes where the food is, you'll be alright. And typically you get another probe to put into the meat so you don't overcook it. Now that was easy, wasn't it? Three simple tricks. Get the gasket to seal it so it breathes properly. 
put the slow and sear in to, for two, two zone cooking. And then finally a good thermometer placed where the food is. Now this is going to turn out some awesome food, I'm promising you that. It's really, really simple. And all together, I think these three are cheaper than actually getting a brand new Weber kettle. So I'm really looking forward to cooking on this one. All right, thanks for watching.